Hello, 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 everybody. It's your girl, Stevie Aisha Mills. I am the I Love My Life strategist, and I help women push past their past so that they can loudly and proudly declare, I love my life. Yes, 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 yes. And every week we get to bring you someone who is absolutely loving their life. They are rocking their it factor. In other words, they are doing what they have been put on this planet to do. And so today is no different. Today is no different. We have an amazing woman who is going to come to us. Let me read you just a little bit of her bio. She is the daughter of a madman. Wow, I can't wait to hear what that is about. She has founded Sleep Spot Strategies to help entrepreneurs take their expertise to turn them into the go-to leader in their industry with 30-plus years of branding and marketing success, including 15 years in corporate and 19 years running her own multi-million million dollar business, she understands how marketing support fails. I love it. Her goal is simple. Build a brand that positions her clients as different and unique and simplify their marketing. Abigail helps her clients look at the bigger vision of their business so they can plan for growth and share their business genius in a way that makes them stand out from the crowd, create a loyal following, and feel good about what they do. She's speaking my language, yes. She's co-founded online and offline networking groups. She's a mentor and presenter for SCORE and speaks regularly on branding and marketing. Her name is, and I'm going to pray not to mess this up, her name is Abigail T. Finn Holler. I pray that was right. If not, she could correct me. But, Abigail, welcome to the show. Welcome to the conversation. Thank you. I'm honored to be here and excited to be here on this second day of 2017. I mean, gosh, the whole year is just a blank slate for us all, which excites me. Yes, it is. It excites me, too. That's awesome. And that's a great way to look at it. That's a great way to look at it. We um, just read your bio, but I would love to just delve a little bit deeper and say, if someone asks you one word to describe how you wake up loving your life each and every day, what word would that be? Possibility. Wow. Every day is brand spanking new. So... It's filled with possibility. Mm. I I love it. I was not expecting to hear that one. <laughs> and when you said it, it struck me in a way in which I love the length. You said clean slate. You said possibility. Um, that's amazing because so many people get stuck in what's not working because they are scared to turn the page. They're scared to wipe the slate. They're scared to turn the impossible into being possible. So thank you for giving us hope. That's the word that I hear resonating today, hope. And yes. tell us about what you do. I love it with a brand in the marketing. I have a background in public relations, so I am very excited about the work you do and how you show up for your clients. So sweet spot marketing, let's talk about it. How did you come up with that name? How, what are some of the things you do in your business? This is your time to truly like share and enlighten us. So I came up with the name because I was working with a lot of women in the networking world who were struggling to get plans F, Q, D, whatever letter it was, um, off the ground. You know, their husbands had been laid off or they had been laid off. They had gone through some type of life trauma, and this was, you know, around the, age, around the years of 2008, 2009, and I was running a promotional products business, and I had had that promotional products business since 97. It was a million-dollar-a-year business, and promotional products are an extremely important part of the marketing conversation, but they're not as strategic as I was trained to be both academically and in the early parts of my career. So as I got involved with networking groups, I would help women understand and navigate through the branding and marketing conversation because they really didn't understand it. And online was really just taking off 
And a lot of people were scared of it. I mean, I didn't get on Facebook until 2010. Uh, you know, my kids had had MySpace accounts and, and these type of things. But I really, other than using my computer for email uh, and Excel and Word documents, I really wasn't on – my business was being built offline. So what happened was I realized – that what I really do and really wanted to do was help people find that sweet spot of who they are, who they serve, and where they can make money. And, that's, and I came up with Sweet Spot Strategies, the name, two years before I actually closed my promotional product business to focus full-time on consulting with small business owners, helping them build better businesses. That's really what I do. I do it in the area of branding and marketing because it is such a foundational and pivotal part of a business success puzzle. You know, build a brand and you build a business, and it's really true. There are very few companies out there that don't have a great brand that aren't also successful. I mean, they may struggle with issues from time. I mean, look, JCPenney's is a perfect example. Sears went through this a couple of years ago you know, where they have a brand and then their brand gets known for something less than what they want it to be and their brand struggles. But if, you, if I can teach a small business owner the relationship between brand building and business building, I feel I've been successful. Awesome, yes. And while you're talking, um, have you ever thought about writing a book? I have actually. I've I have made a commitment, which I keep, and then I let go. And then, of course, I wake up, and it's a new day. So I said I can remake this commitment. So, yeah, I, you know, fleshed out some different pages of a, in different chapters of a book. Uh, if I do write a book, which I am giving some thought to trying to get done in 2017, it will probably be the, called The Three-Legged Stool. Because, wow. uh, and so I'll, I'll leave that up to the, the mystery of what happens in the writing process. Uh, you know, to, 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 you know, keep your guests on edge a little bit and wonder what's the three-leg stool, you know. I know, right? I'm, that's exciting. That's exciting. And I ask that because um, I'm big on handbooks. Like my book, Cultivating Your It Factor, um, 14 must-haves to discover, define, and refine your signature brand. I just feel like what you're talking about is much like that, and we all need a copy of the book. We need to be able to keep Abigail in our homes when we can't <laughs> reach out to you. And that's what made me think about that because you're so right. Um, and I think also that that the sweet spot, sweet spot strategy is going to be a marketing niche of its own because when you find that sweet spot, it's amazing what happens. It truly is. Oh. When you know – where you're in the right place doing the right thing with the right people at the right time, it's, you found it. It's kind of like that eureka type of thing, that paradise type of thing, <laughs> where you're it like, is. oh, my gosh, I finally found it. Can this be real? What do you think about that? Well, I agree. It's magic. And, and part of what is, is kind of the misnomer, is we think, I mean, we have amazing gifts and talents in our own heads and bodies and hearts and souls. But we're often the last people to see it, which is why, you know, family and friend support is so critical. But they also come to looking at us from their own perspective. So if you have a jealous sister She's not going to support your area of your zone of genius, your area of magic, because she doesn't want you to be more successful than she is. So the benefit of working with an outside person, a consultant, a mentor, uh, maybe a coach, is that they really are trained to first and foremost help you see your area of magic and help you realize that there's a way of bringing that magic to the world. I mean, pizza parlors are a great example. Every single person who listens to this podcast, uh, this, this uh, telesummit, this call, should be aware of, you know, should, should know about pizza parlors, right? Every city has multiple pizza parlors. And what happens to the good ones? 
the good ones get known, they get branded, they get frequented, they get referred, you know, and they get known for something, right? They make the best pizza in town. They have the most friendly customer service, and it's family friendly. It's the best sports bar. Um, they're, they're, you know, onion or garlic knots are the greatest in the world. They will find over and over again that there's one thing that they've created their brand around, and that's what we forget is that we don't need to have 50 things to create a brand around. We can create a brand around one thing. And that's where we can build off that magic. When we try to be everything, when we try to be the best sports bar and the best family restaurant, it's not going to work. You can't be the cheapest pizza and the best quality pizza. It's not going to work. So knowing who you are and what you do well gives you that opportunity to truly take your magic and now sprinkle it throughout the world. Because you can't do that until you're willing to say, I am super good at one thing. Now, we can be really good at a lot of things, and we can be okay good at even more, but we're truly, truly good at one thing. We have been endowed with certain unique features and gifts that other people have, but they don't have them in our head and our heart and in our soul because they come to it from a different perspective. So that's, that's what I, I absolutely believe in having unique gifts and finding, working with somebody to help you find out how to bring, really, really bring those to a place where they're now a marketing difference. They're now a branding difference. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I wanted, while you were talking, I wanted to be like, yes, hallelujah. <laughs> and what <laughs> you're saying, shout it out. Shout you're it out. saying it's real, and that's what I believe in so so much because I think you just, um, you just really freed some people when you said that because so many people are, looking to be all things to everybody. Like exactly. people are trying to be they're trying to be the best author, the hottest the hottest and I'm saying authors today, I don't know why, but speaker, coach, trainer, um, all these things. They're trying to be the best, right? But not necessarily so niche down um, to be what you're saying. And that was a great example for me because I love pizza, so I got it clearly. But um, the thing that is true, yes, you, you, yes, 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 yes. It's amazing that um, we just have to really stand true and stand strong in what we've been created to do. And that goes right. beyond business. To me, that's personal, that's professional, that's all kinds of things because once you know who you are personally, then it will exude professionally and you will be in that sweet spot. And that's amazing because, yes, I, I know, for example, one of my greatest attributes to business and to life, I like to have fun and I, I like to keep things very real. So <laughs> I don't try, I was talking to someone recently about this, I don't try to be super serious because that would be incongruent with who I am as a person and therefore incongruent with my brand. And I think that people don't give themselves that freedom to find right. that sweet spot. Oh, my goodness, I'm, I'm excited about this conversation. I, <laughs> I am. Um, because of the fact that we have to learn how to do that so that it can translate through professionally. Whether you're in corporate or whether you're in entrepreneurship or where you are, there's certain things of your personality that have to be in place. So, yes, right. I am excited about that. What do you think is one of the biggest challenges people in entrepreneurship have as far as um, marketing? Invisibility. Oh, um, well, visibility, they really don't do things to build visibility. They do things to put themselves out there as opposed to strategically looking at how are they going to get, you know, imagine for a moment that you see a cat out in the, you know, outside your house and, and you love cats and you want that cat to come to you, but that cat doesn't know who you are. That cat may wait until tomorrow to see if you're there again. That cat may come a little bit closer, but, you know, it's still not going to come up and start rubbing along 
you know, your, your, the body, your legs. That cat gets to, needs to get to know you. That cat needs to get to trust you. And that happens over time. So the biggest mistake that most business owners make in marketing is they don't give their marketing enough time. That's number one. Number two, they are trying to guess what people want to hear from them or want them to say as opposed to really knowing either what they need to say to be out there and say, I'm here, I'm unique, I'm different, this is my point of difference, or asking potential prospects, what do they need more of? Because if you ask somebody, what do you love about the airlines that are out there, they'll tell you about the airlines that are out there. And then they'll tell you the things they don't like about the airlines that are out there. And now you have an opportunity because you have some intelligence to say, you know what, there's a real market for airlines that go between these two cities and fly direct. There's a market for airlines that have wider seats. You know, there's a market for airlines that offer free food. There's, so we, we don't do enough research to really set up our marketing for success. And we sabotage it. Nine times out of ten, we sabotage our own marketing. And if we're sabotaging our marketing, we're sabotaging our business because that's how important marketing is. The, the, I, I, I have on my website a free um, a free ebook, and it's called you know Seven Deadly Mistakes that Business Owners Make. They sabotage their marketing and their sales. And I go step by step through each of the seven, how they show up, what you can do to fix it. Because I'll bet you most business owners are making at least one mistake, and some are making multiple mistakes. So we all need to go get the book. What is what is the website for um, the book? It's sweetspotstrategies.com. And if you go, I'm in the middle of redoing it because just like every person who believes in marketing, we're always evolving our marketing. So my website yes. is okay. It's not it's not my my favorite thing, but um, the the ebook is there, and you can just click and download it. It'll come to you as a PDF. It is really full of some helpful information and things you can do that will, uh, you know, have you at least take a look at your business and go, well, I wonder if I am doing that. So. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. That's awesome. And I think that we, it's hard sometimes to take that look at the business and to give yourself permission to restart. <laughs> I mean, some people are building on faulty foundation because a lot of people they didn't have uh, business training or anything like that before they came to become uh, um, a business owner. They just right. I always tell people I fell into business, and that's the truth well, because and this, I was in corporate America. Right. Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say this. No, is go ahead. Even business owners. I mean, every single entrepreneur is going to start off making certain mistakes. Whether they came with an entrepreneur degree, whether they come from corporate, or whether you know, they're in their kitchen and now somebody's saying you should be selling your chocolate chip cookies. I mean, we all have to learn certain mistakes on our own because they're part of our, our failing up process. But the, the, the thing, I would tell you the biggest fear that I have about what's happening today with the online conversation is that people are following tactical strategists, tactical strategies as opposed to overall strategies in their marketing specifically. So in other words, somebody will tell you you need to go online, and here's your online. Somebody tells you you need to do Facebook ads. You need to start a Facebook group. You need to um, have an opt-in. You need to have an email CRM program. You need to have all of these things which are overwhelming enough, but nobody is showing you the bigger picture. So you're kind of trying to put together a puzzle without seeing what the box looks like. And if you don't have that bigger picture of what the finished product is supposed to look like, you now start doing a little bit of everything and nothing's really working because it's not aligned with your goals. Nobody is sitting there saying, well, what's your goal? 
They're just saying, you need to do this. You should be doing this. Why aren't you doing that? You have to do this. But nobody's looking at the bigger picture. And that's what a strategist, that's what a marketing branding strategist does, is they start from where you are now and where you want to go. Because when we're, we're always recreating. We are always evolving our business. Every single day we wake up, we have a new idea in our head. So we need to be able to figure out how that idea works within the rest of our business. So there isn't a single business owner out there, including a company like Nike or McDonald's or you know, Target or Costco, they're always redesigning their business because they want to be a leader. They want to be an innovator. They want to stay ahead of the curve. So it's really important for them to get up and have somebody be thinking about the business. And entrepreneurs get stuck thinking about the business, you know, all of the work that they have to do and all of the little tiny logistical things they have to do. And yes, those need to be done. And learning how to do them as an entrepreneur is crucial because when you eventually decide to outsource part of your business, which you will do when you get to a certain phase, you want to know that the person you outsource it to knows what they're doing. But somebody's always got to be looking at the bigger picture. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. That's true. Because I think sometimes we, um, especially people like myself, I'm a, I am a big picture person. So a lot of times the details, you need somebody on your team. That's why a team is good to have. You need somebody on your team who is in the details. Um, because, yes, you need all kinds of people, but I definitely need weights to my to my vision sometimes. Somebody's like, hold up, wait a minute, does this make sense? <laughs> and so right. I understand. And then the other version, um, they need people who are like, okay, I see what you're doing. With, we're in January, we're in February, we're in March, we're in April, but what about April the next year? You know, it's like you need all these people to help you to get through. And I think that's very um, amazing. Yes, definitely McDonald's has, to use as a uh, brand leader, McDonald's does have um, their things that they are foundational to, but they also are emerging because you have to emerge. You can't have that 10 cent hamburger that you can't nail. Stuff costs differently. So if you are going to see a big brand do something, I think that small businesses need to pay more attention to that, even in the trends of when they are doing um, uh, doing campaigns as far as the right. holidays and as right. far as different things. We need to be on trend with that as well, and I think sometimes small business owners are not. So right. this is this is great. I am truly appreciating the conversation that we're having today because I feel like marketing, people know that we need to tell people about our businesses, but I think they overlook that part, which is kind of interesting. But you overlook the marketing piece, the public relations piece, the branding piece, and then they will um, intermingle all of that together, right, right. to say well, it is right. completely different. Go ahead. Well, no, I mean, you know, public relations is a part of marketing. I mean, marketing is, is really that overall umbrella, right? So you have paid advertising, you have events and promotion and, and, and public relations, and then you have stuff that you do that's more in package, um, you know, in store, and that's kind of promotion. So if you take a look at marketing as, you know, Philip Kotler defined it, one of the fathers of, market, of modern marketing, and, and you take a look at what was going on is, you, you know, you first looked at the paid advertising, the TV commercials and the, the radio spots and Facebook ads now, and it, it, those, are, those are designed to build visibility and create a call to action. You know, the, the, the promotion side of the business is really designed for specific, you know, upticks in what's happening and building loyalty, right? Because it's more done like on packaging. It's more done, you know, to your customer base, loyalty programs, things like that. And then you have public relations, and those are designed really to give you the biggest bang for your buck, right? You, you come from a PR background, right, you said? Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. So, so you, you worked with 
you know, probably big brands, and you were working on specific things that could be done to uptick, to, you know, to move the needle as much as possible. So mm-hmm. it might be planning a big event. It might be, yeah. you know, I think Starbucks at one point did like the world's biggest cup of coffee, you know, that kind of thing, just to start building momentum and, it, it, you know, the purpose of public relations is to get your name out there in a yeah. positive way and, and, you know, build off of that success. So they're all different types of marketing tactics. And, you know, there again, when you're listening to the tactical experts who are out there, how to, you know, improve your LinkedIn profile, how to do Facebook ads, how to, you know, how to improve your email marketing. Those are tactical things that you do in the marketing world. But without that bigger picture, that strategist who's going to help you create that 360-degree view, all, it's hard to make all of those tactics come together and be aligned with your actual goal. Yes, that's true. And thank you for doing that um, that introspection on those things because that's true. They, that was great unpacking. One of the things that I want to ask, because believe it or not, we are almost to our end mark. Wow, can y'all oh, believe shoot. that? We are rocking and rolling. <laughs> we are rocking and rolling this conversation. But, Abigail, I want to ask you um, to please give us some words of wisdom that we might not have come across in this conversation, something that you feel everybody needs to know as we continue to um, go through these days in 2017. Okay. Uh, re- relative to branding and marketing, uh, I would tell you that, um, number one, you look backwards to see how far you've come, and you look backwards to learn from where you were. That's it. You don't look backwards to think of yourself as a failure. Everything we do in life is a matter of failing forward or failing up. So this is true in our personal development. This is true in how we parent. This is true in our relationships. This is true in our businesses. Because ultimately, the the great thing about being a solopreneur, an entrepreneur, a small business owner, is that we can move so much more quickly than those big names we were talking about earlier. We can change something on a dime. What we want to do is we want to know how we're going to change it and where we're going to change it. So a little bit of strategy and a little bit of thought in the on our business, the big picture part of our business, is going to go a long way. And we should be doing that every couple of months. So once a quarter, definitely once, you know, a year and, you know, every six. My suggestion is, is if you plan on doing it every three months, you'll get it done every six. Because you always want to be looking forward to say, okay, now what do we do? How do we do what we did before better? Why is something not working? Let's take a look at the numbers. What could we do to change this? Is it a graphic approach? Is it a copy approach? Is it a tactical, we change tactics. Instead of doing Facebook ads, maybe we do LinkedIn ads. You know, instead of doing everything online, maybe we look at improving our offline presence. There's a lot of different ways to do things, and there's no one right way for everyone. So that's why it's so important for the business owner to look at their business. And I will tell you, the best investment a business owner can usually have is to work with somebody who's going to help them do that, hold them accountable and keep them on course and be able to get more from them than they can get from themselves. Awesome. Yes. And I love the fact that you um, brought that through personally and professionally because I believe that how you do anything is how you do everything. So, it's not much different in who you should be, especially when it comes to personal branding, which is a whole different conversation. Um, <laughs> but I do want to allow you to um, give your contact information and how people can reach you. Oh, thank you. Um, Sweet Spot Strategies, there's a way to connect with me. I'm on Facebook as Abigail Tiefenthaler. Uh, Sweet Spot Strategies has a business page. I also have a, a group, a public group, that's called, um, it's facebook.com forward slash groups, and it's branding, marketing, sales. And it's a public group. I invite everybody to, to join because it's a good place to, you know, ask questions, see what's going on in the conversation. My phone number is 
804-904-9413. And, you know, I'm the type of person to pick up the phone and call me. I, I answer phone calls and I return them. I mean, I'm still kind of old school that way, you know. So um, I thank you for letting me put my contact information out there. I would love to work with, you know, anybody who's looking to really kind of put all of those puzzle pieces together so they can, you know, get what they want to get out of the business they've started. Awesome, yes. Yes, and we're aligned. It's funny because one of the trainings that I have and one of the um, things I have for my PR business is putting together the pieces of your PR puzzle. <laughs> so, yes, I know that you are the right person to have today, and we truly appreciate um, the knowledge and the wisdom that you imparted on us today. I have learned some things, and I know that the listeners have too. We appreciate you, and thank you again. Everybody, this has been Stevie Aisha Mills of The Conversation. I love The Conversation because it allows me to speak to so many dynamic women and men who are doing great things, not only personally but professionally, and truly showing us how we can loudly and proudly declare, I love my life. Guys, please do join us at one of our experience events that you'll see going across the East Coast. It's a time for you to come out and equip, get equipped with the tools to succeed. So stay tuned. If you ever need me, all you got to do is know how to spell my first name, S-T-E-V-I-I-C-V.com. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Periscope, all those places. So I look forward to hearing from you soon. Make it a great day. I never say have a great day. I always say make it a great day. Why? Because you, you, and yes, you too have the power to do so. Bye.